Good Sunday morning or wherever, whatever time you might be watching this. And welcome to a brand new edition of Holding Court here on the First Day Who's Report YouTube channel. I am, of course, your host, FSHR founding editor, Chris Stevens. Hopefully you all are doing well out there. And we thank you for sharing some of your screen time with us. Um, this is going to be a short episode. I'm not even going to lie to you guys, because what I want to do on Friday is do a bracket show and it may go live. I'm, I'm, I haven't decided if I'm going to do use YouTube or Instagram yet, but we're going to go live and talk about the 24 teams that got in on the boys and girls side. If I'm fortunate, I'm going to reach out to some folks this week, maybe a coach or two, maybe a player or two. I'm going to ask some teams like, hey, you want to be on first day who supports holding court? <laughs> you know, because I mean, shout out to the folks at 302 Sports. We have the live show of Buffalo Wild Wings. I don't have a Buffalo Wild Wings studio, but we have the magic of the Internet. <laughs> so you all can join me via Zoom, StreamYard, Instagram or whatever. So. I may be reaching out to some folks and seeing, you know, if they want to come on, talk about the brackets, how they feel about the team's chances, or I'm, and maybe having some like some observers like myself in the media who go to these games and see who likes who and what bracket. And that's how we'll do it. Oh, also, if you want to catch up with us on social media and check out everything we're doing, everything will be in the description below. Also, if you want to reach out to us just with questions, comments, concerns, feedback, or suggestions, we may take them under advisement, but go ahead anyway. First day, who's report to gmail.com. Once again, that'll be in the description as well. Okay. So I wanted to do the, I wanted to, the live show. I feel like if we can pull that off, we'll be great. And it's good that we're going to do it on a Friday because unfortunately the Henlopen Conference Championship games are no longer on a Friday night. Um, they'll be on Saturday this year, the same time as the Blue Hen. So now as a one person shop, I have to make a decision. Am I going to go to Dover to watch Seaford versus Polly Boys and Woodbridge versus Cape Girls? Or am I going to go to St. Mark's and watch Howard versus Middletown Boys and Apple versus AI Girls? Because they're both at the same time. Boys game starts at one. Girls, well, actually, the girls down at the Hen Lopez starts at four. The girls at Blue Hen starts at 3.30. Either way, unless I get a helicopter now between now and Friday... It's not going to happen. And it's very disappointing because I was actually looking forward to going down to Dover this year and then covering the blue hen the next day. But, you know, things change and you just adjust. Uh, I feel like and we'll, and we'll get into a preview of these games really, really quickly before I talk about the other stuff that I want to talk about. Um, the blue hen girls and the hen Lopen girls, I feel like will be a more competitive matchup. And just a more interesting matchup in terms of competitiveness. Not saying that Howard and Middletown won't be competitive because the thing that hurt Howard and it's probably the thing that's hurt them all year long is that their shots have gone MIA at the worst possible time. It happened against Sally's on Friday that they just couldn't hit the side of a barn. And it happened at Unlocked Light against Middletown and against teams like Middletown and Sally's, you're going to pay because can't hit your shots. That means they're rebounding. They're running the floor. Their offense is working, and you know, a, a lot better sync than yours is. And that's when games can get away from you. Howard still has very much a chance, good a chance as anybody to win the whole dog on thing on the boys' side. Like literally, again, there are 12 teams you can pick out of a hat. Literally. Howard, Polytech, Seaford, Middletown, Caravelle, Slaziana, and I like Middletown as the favorite. Coach Ali is going to kill me for saying that, but Howard Wildcats, we got to stick together. Old Howard Wildcats stick together. Don't kill me. But I like Middletown a lot because they're tall, they're athletic, they find their offense. I mean, the best floor general in the state for my money is Amir Height. So you, when you have a point guard of his caliber, he's the shortest starter on the floor, actually. <laughs> so he's a, he's a, he's a five, nine guy amongst a bunch of six, three, six, four trees, but he's clearly the one that makes that offense go. And when you have a point guard of his caliber, that's able to get the looks for guys like Jaden Rogers, Jaden McGee, Marcus, Edmund, Amir Cunningham. Tough to stop. Very tough to stop. Howard will be a lot. I'm not saying they're not prepared. I think they'll be, a. They, they've seen Middletown now. They've seen this addition to Middletown now, and they know what to expect, and they know how they're going to have to perform. So I'm not saying that game won't be competitive, but I just feel like the Blue Hen girls game is going to be more competitive because the factor and the way these two teams play and coach. 
Lucky Price has done a tremendous job with AI, restoring that program after they had another year low. Kevin Smith always does a great job with Apple Quinnemic. Um, you have unique matchups on both sides. The guards, you got Kyla Reed and Alyssa Cresto for Apple. You have my my trader who just got her 1,000th point this week and uh, Kamani Woods for Apple. I mean, no, for AI, excuse me, Apple and AI. I got to remember to separate the two. Um, there's depth on both sides. Middletown, Apple, doggone it. Come on, man. Apple can counter with scoring from Deja Martin. Lamai Dodson and Jody Johnson are their bigs. AI has Amani Bryce in the backcourt. Jordan Henderson up front. Nyjah Jackson is back as well. So that's going to be a really good game. I feel like the winner of that game will be should feel really good about their state tournament prospects because that's a state tournament game in itself. It just happens to be an exhibition. And I was um, 19, 20 years into my career when I found out you don't count <laughs> the Blue Hen and the Hen Lopen championship games towards a team's record. Like it's just literally an exhibition game. It's a, it's a it's a it's a it's a glorified scrimmage, but it's a fun glorified scrimmage. Don't get me wrong, because you get to decide who is the best between your flight and your division. So that's pretty cool. Um, the Henlopen girls. This is a case of experience versus youthful exuberance. And Pat Woods and his staff at Cape Henlopen have done a tremendous job with that young team because they start two sophomores, a freshman a junior and one senior. Jayana Lee is the only girl on that team that has extensive state tournament experience. So when you have young talents like Hayden Hudson, Faith Ray, Amalia Fruitman, Maya Ball, you have to get those girls, you know, the experience. And right now, Cape is 18 and two. Like they've literally beaten just about everybody that's in front of them. I can't remember. Did they have, they hadn't, in, no, they have not had an in-state loss this year because they uh, lost to, um, West Catholic and uh, wait, have they had an in-state loss this year? I don't think they have. Yeah, I, I know they lost to some team down at um Slam Dunk, that, um, West Catholic, one of them, one of them joints, one of them Philly joints. Um, yeah, they literally have beaten everybody in state in front of them. No, yes, they. Their one in-state loss was Caravel. Forgot they lost to Caravel in the season over. I was there. How did I forget that? Um, but other than that. This team, 18 and 2, not really challenged in the Henlopen North. This is a team that could crash the Final Four party. People probably think it's going to be the usual suspects when it comes to the private schools. Like, obviously, Sanford and Ursuline are going to be there. There's no two ways about it. They're gone. Um, Tatton and Caravel both have really good chances. Archmere has a good chance. But Cape Henlopen is probably the best equipped of the teams not named Sanford and Ursuline to make the Final Four. So. That and you, when you can't, when you take into account that they're probably not going to finish any lower than third in the seedings, you have you play a first round game, you have to drive all the way down to Lewis and see those girls. It's going to be a bit of a shell shock, but you don't count the chickens before they're hatched. But I feel like Cape's a very good team. Woodbridge got back to where they usually are as Henlopa South champions after Lake Forest won it last year for the first time since Paula Abdul and MC Scat Cat were on the charts. Google Paula Abdul and MC Scat Cat. Trust me, you'll get a laugh out of it. And that team is loaded too. Woodbridge is. Reagan Robinson, Peyton Keeler, DeAsia Jones, Ayanna Mims, Delaney Larimore coming over from Laurel. That is a team that in the right draw could also make some noise possibly trending towards the Final Four because Woodbridge has made a Final Four before. Isaiah Robinson does a good job with that team. So I don't feel like these two teams are going to give any quarter, even though it's a quote unquote exhibition game. Like they're going to give each other everything they have because they want to get prepared for the tournament as well. So I feel like the girls games are probably going to be the more intriguing when it comes to the hen Lopen and blue hen championship games, not taking anything away from Seaford and Polytech either, because those two teams can get buckets in abundance. Darrell little versus Brent Ricketts should be a fun matchup. Kyle can Kyle Gamber versus a Kendra Matthews. Um, Xavier Brewington versus Avion Matthews. Like, literally pick your big three. Which big three you like best? That's that's what it's going to be in that game. It's probably – I would be shocked if, if if the combined total points between that teams is anything under a buck 50. I feel like that's going to be like an 88 to 83 type of game. And those are the type of games I like personally. Like, literally offense. Offense makes the game go round. 
And this is going to be my friendly reminder that, yes, Delaware needs a shot clock in the worst way. Because there are some times, once again, when people are just like, Got to have a shot clock here. I'm sorry. We just have to have a shot clock here. There literally is no reason for games to be ended like 35 to 33 or 41 to 39. I mean, that's not basketball to me. And yes, you, you I mean, you've seen my face. It's the strangest thing now because I was doing, uh, I did another broadcast this week. Shout out to Sean Green. Thank him for, thanks to him for having me on doing the Apple William Penn broadcast on Thursday. And people are like, hey, I, I watch your podcast. I'm like, wow, thank you. I'm just like, so so you know what I'm like now. So if you want to talk to me about this whole shot clock mess, we can debate. But I'm just going to tell you every time, we need a shot clock in Delaware. There's no two ways about it. This stall, The stall ball is ruining the game. Just had to get that off my chest. Okay. Now. Like I said, this is going to be a short episode. I mean, all of the episodes have been short recently since I've been taking my notes. Obviously, this is this is something that I want to impress upon kids that want to get into this type of content creation because I can't we can't call it a business anymore. It's really strange because I grew up in journalism at Howard High School of Technology. We had a field called Communications Technology, ComTech, which is basically TV production. Shout out to Mr. Frank Vanderslice, one of the best teachers I've ever had. And I've been doing this in some form or another, basically three quarters of my life. So being prepared and having notes in front of you helps you out a lot. If you're going to do like YouTube videos, Instagram reels, all of that good stuff it helps to be prepared. So yeah, the first few weeks of the season, I was just like going off the head and I wanted to, you know, keep going off the head, but I realized with Going off the head meant the episodes were going to be in the 30, 40 minute mark. And nobody's going to sit around for a 30, 40 minute YouTube video. Just not. So I got better at taking my notes and just putting those in front of me and just saying, hey, OK, this is what I'm talking about. Here's what I'm talking about there. So that's how it works. A little professional advice. New Media 101. Professor Stevens. Still on. Still for duty. Still reporting for duty. But yes. Um. Once the brackets come out on Friday, I don't think there are going to be any real surprises. I feel like everybody that makes the tournament is going to have earned it this year because when you look into, when you take into account that you already have eight to 10 teams that have legit cases for buys, and this is on the boys' side I'm talking about now, the girls' side, a little more concrete. The eight that are going to be there are the eight that you probably expected at the beginning of the year. Okay, so Middletown is probably going to be the top seed followed by either Seaford or Sally's. Then you got Howard, William Penn, Apo, and who else? Sanford and Tyler. Those, those should be your eight on the boys' side. I think either Polly or maybe Laurel has a chance at a bye, but those are, that's it. The eight that I just, the, eight, the first eight that I named, those are the ones that are probably going to get the bye. It's just, it all depends on the order. It all depends on the order because when the committee meets on Friday, here's what we need to here's what you need to know about when the committee meets on Friday. They have they well, they've already started the process, but they have to call ADs from the out of state teams that like Sally's and Middletown and Howard and Apple and Sanford and so on have played and said, Hey, can we get the records, the records up to the moment for your boys basketball team? And the girls are gonna do the same too. The girls committee is gonna do the same too. So when you think when you think about that. You know how annoying that can be when some teams from out of state like to pretend like they just can't be bothered to pull up, you know, the scorebook and say, okay, we won this game, we lost this game, we won this game, we lost this game, we won this game, we won this game. And then they'll, and like, that has to be annoying if you're a committee member. And then you have to add up the points. Once again, if you're not familiar with the DIA basketball point index, here's how it goes for every win, you get two points. If you're a team, if your opponent, if an opponent that you played has a 501 winning percentage or better, that's a bonus point. If you played a team with a 701 or better winning percentage, that's two bonus points. So you take all of those bonus points, you take the number of points off of victories times two. So let's say a team wins 12 games. 12 times two is 24. They've played a Three teams with a 501 or better. That's three bonus points. They play 
teams with a bonus point of seven or one or better. So that's eight. So 11. So 11 bonus points times 24 win points. That's plus 24 wins. 35. You divide it by the number of games played. So let's say they played 19 games. Then you take 19, you take 35 divided by 19 and you get the point index. So the committee has to do all of this math. They have to do all of this fact checking and finding and then schedule the games. Because those of us in the media who have complained about staggered start times, we got to realize that the referee situation is still dire at best. Like we got referees doing two and three games a night. And granted, it's going to be a little easy. No, it's not going to be easier, quite frankly, because even though you're going to have just boys one night and girls one night, you're still going to have eight games a night for the first two nights of each tournament. So what you're going to have to figure out is which referees can get to where and what time will the schools be ready to host these games? Because if we're not going to have neutral site games, then the schools that are going to be charged with the task of hosting have to make sure the gym is clean. You know, they have concession stands. They have people sitting at the table with the right information so nobody gets left out, especially now that the ticket thing has gone electronic. So the basketball committee has an unenviable task, but we would be good to, you know, just give those folks some grace because obviously last year, the thing with Polytech and Del, Del Castle was awkward as all get out, but they figured it out. So just have to, you know, give people grace in a time that we all need grace, quite frankly. But yes, once again, once the brackets go live on Friday, because they'll probably be done because the committee meets, I believe, I want to say 10 a.m. Somebody will correct me if they, once they watch this, they meet, they meet at 10 a.m., They'll probably be done with seatings probably around one or two o'clock. And because I work from home, my day job is remote is, is a work from home gig. So all I got to do is just, you know, say, hey, I'm going to lunch real quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> no, nah, but I don't even have to do that. But in general, you know, once the brackets go live, if I have people that are willing to join me on live, whether it's YouTube, Facebook or IG, I'm going to go live and talk about the tournament. And if anybody wants to jump on you know, and just ask some questions. I'll be glad to ask her questions about the tournament, about my predictions or opinions, first day who support, whatever. We can do that. So that's the plan. And that's what I plan to do on Friday. So like I said, I'm going to farm a question out on IG, on Facebook, and on Instagram. I already said Instagram. On IG, Facebook, and Twitter. You know, if I go live, will you watch? If I go live, will you come on? If you go live, if I go live, will you ask me some questions? That type of deal. So that's what I plan to do. Other than that, the week that was, oh yeah, I want to shout out uh, Tower Hill head coach Patrick Kaiser on the boys' side because silly me, I got a new phone recently and I didn't add the first day hoops report email to my phone, which is kind of crazy because this is my, you know this is my baby. So I needed to add it to the phone. I didn't add it to the phone. But before I went to Howard um, Sal's, I checked my laptop real quick. And sure enough, there was an email from Coach Kyler saying, Dean Shepard's 13 points away from 1,000. Um, we'd love to have you there. And I said, no, I'm not missing that. Not, not a chance. No, I got to be there. <laughs> so I made, sure my, I made sure my camera was charged. My camera battery still died anyway. So, but not before I got the 1,000th point. I had to do an interview with Dean on my phone. I'll probably load that on IG later today. But overall, you know, able to be there for those moments and watch these kids who have worked so hard. Because as I talked about last week, these this group of seniors that's closing in on 1,000 or have scored 1,000, they missed a lot of time because of the pandemic. Because 2021 was one of those, one of the, probably one the strangest years – of my career as a high school, as a, as a sports journalist, period. Like I've covered college basketball, high school football, high school basketball, college football, and nothing compares to going to the front door of a game with a mask on and having to QR code your way into a game and having your press pass front and center so nobody thinks that you're trying to break protocol. It's the strangest thing. 2021 is in one of those seasons that you probably could write a book about. And I plan to write a book about my experiences in journalism. So once again, 
if y'all see me reminiscing on, you know, so if you see me reminiscing on the first day who support uh, Twitter account, if you follow, if we're friends on Facebook, because quite a few of y'all want to be my friend on Facebook for some strange reason. I mean, I haven't figured that out yet, but I mean, I'm not complaining. If y'all catch me reminiscing about my career in journalism, say, Chris, start your memoir. Please do. I need all the help I can get. But yes, Friday, we're going to go live. Solo, or maybe we guess, but we're definitely going to talk about the brackets. And want to thank y'all. Oh, yeah. We also had a, who else scored a thousand points this week? Uh, my, my trader scored a thousand points for AI. She did it in three years. It's important to note three seasons because AI's girls did not have a team in 2021. She played with the boys, but most of her points were scored in three years with the girls. Shout out to my great job. Um, Caitlin Smith of Tower Hill. Tower Hill had a pretty good week. Caitlin Smith scored a thousand on Thursday. Dean Smith scores, Dean Shepard scores a thousand on Friday. Pretty cool. And uh, let me find this other person from Greenwood Mennonite. Yes, Greenwood Mennonite. I apologize because I thought I had had this young man's name committed to memory. I did not. Don't get old, people. I mean, mean, you want to age, but you want to have your mind sharp. Yes, Clay Long of Greenwood Greenwood Mennonite. Shout out to the Flames. He also hit 1,000 points this week. Another two straight weeks with four kids scoring 1,000 points. That's impressive, and that's 10 for the year. Again, these kids, you know, have had to go through a season where they played maybe 10 10 or 15 games at the most, when it's usually a 20 to 24 game season. And they still managed to hit a milestone, which is still very much sacred in high school and college basketball, quite frankly. So these kids deserve a ton of credit, and we are proud and happy to give them that shot because a thousand points. There's nothing to sneeze at. I don't care who you play. I don't care who you play against. I don't care what type of style you play. You still have to dribble. You still have to get open. You still have to shoot. And you still have to make the shots. And if you make them to the tune of a thousand points, then you are that person. You're them. You're him. You're her. You're them. All the love in the world to y'all. Greatly appreciate watching y'all's talents over the last four years because this senior class is the first first day who support senior class because we started doing this in 2019-20. And now these kids that were freshmen are seniors now. They're getting ready to go to college. They're getting ready to play basketball or some other sport, you know. And it's been fun to watch these kids grow. And as long as we have your support, you know, you guys keep showing love. You guys keep checking out the blog. You guys keep, you know, following us on Instagram, watching this vlog, this podcast. We're going to keep doing it. So, this next again, I can't, I cannot believe this group of freshmen is now seniors, man. Wow, wow, time really does fly, and we're just, we're just, we're happy to be along for the journey, man. Just very happy to be along for the journey. I said this was going to be a short episode, and we are closing in on 23 minutes. Okay, let me shut up. Thank y'all for watching this edition of Holden Court. Greatly appreciate y'all's eyes, ears, minds, and hearts as always. Once again, on Friday, we will go live talking about the tournament all 24 teams on the boys all 24 teams on the girls then we'll probably talk about predictions and possible bracket busters and all that good stuff once again if you want to follow us on social media or catch up on everything that we're doing check the description below for all the information i gotta get ready to go for a walk because i like to go on walks on sunday morning and i didn't anticipate this video being as long as it was because usually like 18 19 minutes like i said we're closing in on 24 so once again thank y'all for watching whole court and once again we will see you in the gyms this week next week The week after that and the weekend after that, take care of yourselves out there. Peace out.